Building the ultimate clean flight stack for your quad with a minimum of wiring can be a bit of a challenge. You need to find somewhere to mount your VTX and receiver, and that just means more wires. Reducing the amount of wiring means not only a need to build, but mechanically it's more robust and you're less likely to snag anything in a crash. This new 20x20F7 flight stack from Z's has a really cute feature that means you can mount your receiver and VTX direct to the flight controller PCB. Hello and welcome to the Welly Bloke channel. If you haven't heard of these before, they're a small Italian company of friends who are gamers, hobbyists, racers, and so they say crash experts. They make quality high-end products. They've got a five inch racer frame kit, but their main products are flight controllers and flight stacks. And their 30 by 30 F7 stack has been available for a while now, but now they've brought out a smaller 20 by 20 version that's got all the features of its larger brother, but somehow still manages to have some space on the board to directly mount your receiver and VTX. Taking a closer look at this, Z's have done something I haven't actually seen before. Usually when there's a 20 by 20 version of a 30 by 30 flight controller, there's some features that simply don't make it, mainly due to the smaller footprint and simply lack of space on the PCB. And as far as I can tell, this is exactly the same spec and has all the features of its larger brother, which is unusual. The 4-in-1 ESC has got a lower current rating, but that's about it really. So this is the usual STM32 F722 F7 MCU and the MPU6000 gyro combo. You get six UARTs, so there's plenty of scope for adding GPS or optical flow sensors, whatever you want. You get 128 meg of onboard flash memory for your black box. And there's a VTX switch so you can control your FPV camera directly from your transmitter via beta flight. And these are the two locations where you can mount the receiver here and a VTX. Now you can power this off anything up to 8S and there's also an onboard 5 volt 3 amp back for powering cameras VTX LEDs and so on that's over here and this is protected from overcurrent over temperature and short circuit it's also got the usual OSD chip up here with filtering to give you a nice noise free image in your goggles now you could use a different VTX but this is really designed to use a TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano that mounts down here and you can use one of the supplied pin headers here to solder it directly in place just solders in there like that and although this is also geared up to use the TBS nano receiver like one of these mounted there it's not immediately obvious that you can use loads of other receivers as well because this is very new there's no manual available yet but if you check out the Z's website They've got an awesome infographic for the 3030 version showing how to connect an FR Sky XM Plus, RXSR, an X9 Mini, a Spectrum, and of course the TBS Crossfire Nano. And this is identical for the 2020, but they've had to move some of the pads around because it's a small board and there's just a lot less real estate. And same as the 3030, there's a few solder pads you need to bridge to set things up properly. Down here are the pads to select either 5 volts or VBAT for the VTX. And that simply means that you can choose to power the VTX from 5 volts or battery, depending on which Unified Pro that you're using. And along the bottom here are the header pins for the connections to the VTX. And along here we've got UART5 IO pins with a couple of 5 volt power pins, so you could easily use this for maybe GPS or something. Now along the top here you've got the connections for your FPV camera. And there's a control pin on the right here, so you can use either joystick emulation or serial for camera control. There's a couple of solder pads on the back here. 
just at the top, a bit difficult to see, but these are the ones that you bridge out to choose whether you're going to use joystick emulation or serial control. These are the same as the ones on the 3030, but they've had to put them on the other side of the board because there's less space. And this is using UART 6. Now down the right hand side here are all the various connections for whatever receiver you're planning to use. Again, check the excellent Z's infographic for the exact details. Until the 2020 version comes out, just use the 3030 manual. It's pretty much the same. And what have we got down there? Just down here, that's UART 2 IO pins. And again, you've got five volt power on there. Now you need to choose the receiver voltage you want, 3.3 or five volts. So that'll be 3.3 for spectrum or five volts for everything else. This is another set of pads on the other side of the board compared to the 3030. And they're just up here. You have to bridge out either the top ones or the bottom ones, depending on which voltage you want for your receiver. And when you're doing your build, don't forget to bridge the VTX receiver and camera control pins or nothing will work. And same as the 3030, there's some connectors to plug LED strips into in each corner. There we go. That's quite nice. And you can configure these two LEDs in each corner with Betaflight if you want to. And remember, this is using a USB-C connector, which is the way most flight controllers are going these days. What else? Uh, yes, these are the buzzer pins down here, which on the 3030 are on the other side of the board. Now, if we have a look at the 4-in-1 ESC, this is rated at 45 amps and supports all the usual D-Shop protocols and provides ESC telemetry as well if you need it. And one fantastically simple but brilliant feature is the holes for the included filter capacitor. You can just push the capacitor wires through the holes and solder the battery wires all in one go. Super simple stuff that others could learn from. And although the flight controller can run off 8S, this ESC can only run on 6S. But that's pretty usual to be honest. You also get a whole load of mounting hardware. You get gummies, the interconnect cable, header pins, and you get a battery cable with an XT60 on it. Now, this comes installed with Betaflight 4.1.0 on the Z's target, so I'll be upgrading this to 4.2 for the build that I've got planned for this. Now, I've seen some criticism of this board that the solder pads are a bit small and fiddly to solder, and using the pin headers, isn't a great idea because they're difficult to unsolder if you want to change the receiver or the VTX. And to an extent, that's actually true. But you've got to remember, Z's have squeezed exactly the same features of their larger 30 by 30 board onto a PCB. It's less than 50% of the size. And that's a pretty remarkable achievement, I think. The price you pay for that is the pads are going to be smaller and the layout of the various IO pins for the UARTs takes a bit of a hit. Now, I don't actually have any problem using pin headers for the receiver and the VTX connections. People can find them difficult to solder if they're using the wrong gear, and you've got to use a good small wedge soldering iron tip at the right temperature and use some flux. And removing them is dead easy. Don't bother trying to unsolder them all in one go. Just snip off the header pins, remove the receiver or the VTX, whichever it is, and they just unsolder the pins and it will just drop away. Hardware is pretty reliable these days and I don't think you'll need to change them that often, if at all. Now, this is an impressive small 20 by 20 stack that's still fully loaded and doesn't miss out on anything. So if you want to build a three inch that's got GPS and optical flow, you can. I'm planning on using this for an upcoming CineRat build, so watch out for that. Now, there is a downside to all of this. Because it's so new, Z's don't have a manual or any wiring diagrams for it yet, but I'm sure that will be fixed soon. The documentation for their 3030 is very good indeed. 
Price wise, this is about £73 or $95 and I'll leave links in the description where you can check out the latest prices. And you can buy the flight controller and the 4-in-1 ESC PCB separately if you want. Same goes for the 3030. A massive thanks to Z's for sending me a couple of these for review. And the good news is they've agreed that I can offer them as a giveaway. The bad news is though, I'm keeping one of these. If you're subscribed to the channel, you'll get notified of the giveaway very soon. As always, thanks for watching and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time.